Welcome to this new episode of What Every Non-Christian Should Know About. And today is about Matthew 13. And I trust that if you've come to this video on my channel, you are a believer or pre-believer who is seeking God. And so today I just want to pick up very quickly two parts about Matthew 13 that I think are most important for you. In verse 15, Jesus quotes the prophet Isaiah saying, so that they may not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and understand with their heart and turn, and I would heal them. And in context, that was Isaiah speaking to the people who do not want to respond to God. But here Jesus says, Blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. And let anyone who has ears listen. So we can also read this negative prophecy in a positive way because actually they gave us four steps to encounter Christ. So if you're seeking God, these are the four steps to be taken. The first is to see. We too can recognize the invisible God in this world. In the many miracles that happen, in a prayer that gets answered, in the healing of a sick, in many miraculous miracles that happen, but also in very ordinary things. In creation, we recognize the Creator. In the beauty of the seas, of the mountains, of the forests, in the beauty of human beings, you recognize the beauty of the Creator. Are you still in awe of the beauty of God when you see creation? Some years ago, before I was married, I was still dating and we went on a one-day diving trip. I had just learned diving and as we went underwater, I saw beautiful corals in the Philippines, red and yellow and all kind of very bright colors. It made me in awe and wonder of the beauty of the Creator. That even those parts that normally we don't see, He didn't make under the water ugly, but He still showed His beauty even under the water. Are you still in awe of God and you see the beauty of His creation? So first is to see. The second is to listen. To listen to the Word of God. If you're seeking God, then open up the Scriptures. Because when we open up the Scriptures, God will be speaking to us. We hear the words of Christ. And after we have taken these first two steps of seeing God and recognizing God in creation, and then to open up our ears to listen to His Word, then maybe we should take the leap of faith and open up our heart to Him to pray so that we can encounter Him and let Him into our heart. And when we do so, then we can come to that fourth step of turning to convert our hearts to Christ to repent and to change our ways, come back to Him. You see, the parable of the sower teaches us that there are many ways that people respond to the Word of God. Some are hardened like the path, and so when they hear the Word of God, they're not responding at all. And others are like rocky ground, where yes, the Word of God can come in, and maybe you get kind of excited by it in the spur of the moment, but then you're not really letting it sink in and take root. And so, when persecution comes, difficulties come, you give up. Or maybe you are still like the soil under the thorn bushes in which the seed can't really sprout up because it gets suffocated by the thorn bushes. And the thorn bushes are like the cares of this world, the worries of this world, and even the lure for wealth. How much longer are we going to run this red race of life for more money, more wealth, thinking that that will bring us happiness? We have already tried for so long. Has it really brought you true happiness? Or are you looking for more? Because the only one who can fill the emptiness in our heart is Jesus. So let's come to Him. Let's become like the rich soul. And let's take in the Word of God. And let it grow within us. And it will bear fruit. 104, 64, 34. It doesn't matter. Because Christ is bringing us happiness. Christ is bringing us home. So let's come to Him. And open up our hearts to Him. And let the Word of God transform our lives.